Due to complexity, met two times during IEM Sydney, where they played an identical veto, but the results were not. Today we'll do a full-on anti-strat on G2 like Complexity did to secure the grand final spot at IAM Sydney. Let's start with Anubis. I think we need to start by understanding the roles G2 plays on the CT side of Anubis, and how the players act in the roles, since this builds up the foundation of G2 CT side, and how Complexity can approach the T side. Let's start with Nico and his role as the mid player on Anubis. Well, the mid player on Anubis usually just holds it until the mid or end part of the round. Or if A or B need help, he will be the player to rotate over first. Nico usually starts early by using this smoke here, and the main goal for this is to make sure Complexity cannot push middle and win control of it early, as well as it's deep enough so if he wants he can peek the bridge and water if his teammate needs that. If he gets smoked off, he will jump here since the smoke leaves a gap and he have a Molotov ready in case he hears some steps. And this is all done to make sure it's harder to take middle, and when he cannot hear anyone in middle, he just stands here and jiggle peeks to make him a harder target to hit. When entering the mid stage of the round, if Nico can't see anyone in middle, there are no need for him to stay. And here after peeking out, after the utility in middle is gone, he falls back rather fast to make sure he's ready to help where he's needed. In this other round, we are still in this other round we are still seeing how Nico uses the mid smoke and now goes to the side of it, in hope to hit the spam from it. And after that, he starts to look for the complexity boost over the smoke just in case they were going for the boost. And this is a great way and a good indication for complexity to maybe not use this boost in the rematch. And again, as soon as he moves away from middle to avoid nades, molotovs or something else like a spam, he walks to the door. So we are starting to see some patterns to how he is playing middle. Third one we are looking at, we are still seeing Nico do the same smoke, but this time he uses this flash to flash water for his A teammates. And then he uses the information his teammate can get on A to make this risky move of jumping down water to be even faster to rotate to B site. Monisi is the AWPer, and the AWPer does a lot of things, but the main objective is to play around his spawn and be unpredictable, as well as trying to find the opening kills on the CT side. Monisi starts by throwing away all of his utility but two flashes he got, to the mid player and rotation from A. This is done so if he dies, he will not die with too much utility out. And here we will start by holding main from temple, this is a good spot to hold from, since the T's will have to clear so many angles by the time they are clearing temple and where Monisi is, he will be able to get his kill. As well as when main gets smoked, he will be able to just barely look over it sometimes, making this position a great way of holding for complexity. Something we can see fast is how unafraid he is. The wrong goes down to a 3v3 and a 2v2, when he's rotating over, and no fear in this child place. With him walking out of the smoke to kill the last player quite risky, but having such a risk taker as an upper is very useful and makes it so much harder to predict how he will play. This is why Monisi is so hard to read. When he has the best spawn, he uses this and this is the path to peek early from pizza to main. And here finds the first kill. And this position is usually not getting flashed when the first complexity player is peeking. And again, to predict this is impossible for complexity. But it's good to know, to be aware of how aggressive Monisi can play when he has the spawn for it. And after this kill, he quickly moves away since you do not want to stay here in the same position for a long time, and he knows this. As well as dropping his utility again to make sure he do not die with too many utilities, that has gone unused. And then he hold water from here, and this is not the best way since if complexity pushes out of main, his back is turned to it, but G2 must have had the information of where complexity were, and why Monisi plays like this, but this can be abused. JKS is the A anchor of the team, and here your main goal are just to hold your assigned site and you have to be like a ship anchor and hold down the site. And you can't leave before you know it's the other site or somewhere else. So how do JKS play in this role? JKS start by running down here and not the other route, since this will allow him to be faster to heaven and set up for this nade. That is a very crucial nade, since the stair position is crucial and this nade is just straight up free damage and free information, since the nade makes a sound when making contact to a player. But again, he is the anchor, but you need to make sure complexity cannot just push him. And here with MP9 he wants to play closer, so he Molotov's A main early like this, and then play in this off angle with the MP9 to give him the upper hand, if Complexity decides they want to push him. This round, he has a player coming later to help him on A, and here we can clearly see how he plays. As soon as this player is in the right position, then JKS moves forward to play closer, but he does not take that risk until he knows he has a player helping him. Quite opposite to how we saw Monisi play with the op. And this can be good to know, since to abuse this as a T is to just make sure you can get JKS to just play more alone and become way more passive. And then JKS smokes a main and plays in this corner to peek off the pillar player contact. And as soon as the bomb is spotted on B, JKS starts to rotate, but not before, 
like any good anchor is supposed to do. JK's early game is the same. A nade stares and a Molotov A main to hold off the rush from the T side. But since he now is alone and has gotten an UG, he wants to play a more balanced position. Well, what do I mean with that? Well, since he's alone, you do not want to play far back on site, since then Complexity can just get close, pop a flash and run him over. So, by going to the pillar he is safer and will be able to catch Complexity before they execute. And this is done to make sure he can get some information before Complexity can execute A site. And here he gets one kill and a reposition fast, but loses to the swing. Quite unusual to see him staying after the first kill, since you do not want to die. But I would assume he'd do this, because he didn't think he had time to move back to site before the trade attempt from Complexity would come. The next one we're looking at, he does the same. But this time he uses the Complexity smoke they themselves throws on A to his advantage, where he's able to get one kill and shoot Halsor low. And this is how he deals with Complexity trying to set up and execute before he can spot them. And right after this kill, the smoke allows him to fall back, where he do not go to hide, but rather just sits here and holds from backside. And since he's alive, he will then call for G2 to not rotate and help since he can still with 10 HP hold of complexity, and this helps G2 massively in focusing B and middle where the round will end. So as an anchor, there are not many weaknesses we can see. Hunter is the anchor as well, but for B, so how does he play it? Well, he starts by going towards water, where we'll use this flash, and then wait for what the call is, since if complexity is pushing, he might peek off the flash, as well as the flash is good to condition complexity to think that when the flash is thrown, he will not peek to make Complexity less afraid of this flash than they should be. And then he smokes just to make sure Complexity keeps out. And this is done on the timing in case Complexity has walked all the way from stairs to water. Then when this is cleared, he tells one of the B players to rotate off and drop him all the utility they have, so he can hold himself. Since G2 have no need to have 3 players on B if water is completely clear. And now that the bomb has been spotted, he rotates over quickly to help, just like an anchor would do. This one we can see how he deals with a push. Here again he starts by going towards con and water, but when the flash starts to be thrown outside he quickly turns his attention to them. And here he holds the right side of the pillar since the player on the side can hold the left side of it. And here he just picks between left and right when he have to and where complexity will swing and he cleans up with 3 kills. Hunter starts similar again with going con and flashing, but when complexity water smoke lands he uses a molotov in front of it to make sure complexity can't push into it. Then places himself here to maybe catch a player trying to walk out of it. He then re-smokes it and throws a nade for information, before he then walks back and starts to hold off main. Then whenever utility comes, he uses this smoke, since this smoke allows him to perfectly smoke off main without peeking it. And then he holds the top of the smoke to make sure complexity are not jumping for information or boosting. And then walks back to connector, where he will hold main while Monacy holds water. And they can play this bait and switch setup. As the B rotator, you want to play loose. So you will always have a shot at getting to where you need to be fast, and need to play for the information you yourself can gather and your teammates can gather for you. So how do Hooksy play such a crucial position? Hooksy starts the round by throwing an early flash just to keep complexity on their toes and then playing backside to hold off main, since Hunter usually holds water, so main is Hooksy's domain on B site. And as we can see, he moves around quite a lot and never stands still, and this makes him quite hard to read. Then when he walks back towards the highway or CT, he holds for the swing towards site, but when complexity are smoking, he quickly changes to hold backside and can find a kill. And this is just a product of how unpredictable he is in these type of rounds. So complexity had no idea he could be there. Next one, Hooksy starts in middle. And here he has this flash ready for Nico in case he needs it. But when JKS dies, he quickly uses the flash over here to stop complexity from pushing if they are. So he can be allowed to get to heaven to hold. Then Molotov's behind the pillar and then he just jiggle peeks in hope to find a kill. When bomb is spotted, he runs back, but through heaven and spawn, and not from middle, since again he wants to go CT to hold off the execute. Hooksy starts again with holding main and using this early flash, and then going towards backside to hold in this off angle. And when Hunter leaves water, Hooksy will go towards CT to hold, since if complexity takes water and swings out, this is a very good position to kill an unexpected player. As soon as Nico finds two kills, he runs back middle and takes the mid duties from Nico to hold it, and here he is found, but it shows you how active Hooksy is around the map. Ok, now we understand how G2 plays their CT side, so let's now look at some executes they are doing on the T side, and the roles to everyone and the utility they use, as well as gaps in the execute we can abuse next time. Let's start with an A execute, G2 are going all 5 players water, meaning they leave a bunch of gaps and positions open and unguarded, but this is not a problem as long as they are able to do the execute fast. 
Nico starts by going here and then using this Molotov and Smoke combo to hit middle and camera. Then he's the third or fourth guy out and here goes towards the pillar to not line up with the player of G2 pushing camera as well as going pillar allows him to be faster to trade and see camera if a player need him. Monis is the player to go towards stairs and just hold off any aggression from complexity from con or bridge so that his goal early before he goes here to use this smoke for heaven and then just sit in water to make sure if complexity are pushing behind he will be able to get these kills or at least get the information. JKS is straight up to entry but he has a smoke but why? Well Nico and Monesi are smoking everything that is needed so JKS will use this smoke try to re-smoke something, fix up a smoke if it missed or smoke the Molotov that complexity might throw. He then will trade the heaven player, clear behind pillar and just take camera and space for his team. Huxi has no utility so he will be the first player to swing out. And here we can see he swings before the utility has dropped, since this is done to try to catch the timing of when complexity sees the nades and utility and stops caring and rotates off. And sometimes you have misses like this, but usually this will allow you to break the habits of the enemy. It's a very good way to play. Hunter starts around by smoking water, and then he's just like Hooksy, just running out with the utility to trade JKS if needed and want to take space. The exit is perfect from G2, but why? Well, Complexity used a Molotov early to hold off any fast pushes and wasted it deep in A main and not when the push came. And this allows G2 to just run out and not be afraid of any Molotovs coming their way. As well as Complexity are set up with one player heaven and two in middle. So when the smoke comes, the middle player have to push through them and this leaves them in the opening camera and nowhere to hide. And this gives G2 some free kills. The biggest weakness of G2 in this round was that they did not properly clear pillar so if Complexity had a player here he could have done a lot of damage as well as G2 peeking before the utility and flashes is never ideal and something you can abuse. Round 9 is all about the BX youth and here G2 are doing this with a split push with 2 players on B main and then 3 players towards water. Nico starts by giving away his smoke to the player doing some smokes I will show after. And then he Molotov's main to make sure Complexity can't push out and get the information. And then he uses this nade that hits any players towards Con in the opening. And it's just some good damage to do on the Con player, since this is a crucial player G2 has to deal with for this execute. And then Nico will just casually chill outside of main until the execute will happen. When the execute happens, he will peek out on the timing of the flashes and the Con players and clear the left side of sight and just hold side smoke, where he here finds a kill. Monty starts around by holding water con and a main for his team since this allows his teammate to cross to water with his protection and then he will walk back and pick up the bomb and go towards b main and here uses this smoke to be allowed to safely cross towards site. jks starts around by nading the heaven player on a if complexity are going for the nade it's a nice counter to the player nading from complexity and then he will go towards water here him and hunter will try to kill the con player and look how jks allows hunter to fight while he holds for any complexity player swinging out to trade or help his teammate before he gets the kill hunter struggle with. Then he uses this smoke for temple and then after being shot behind Molto's behind to keep any water players out of con until his teammate can take sight. He walks back sight and clears this out for his teammates. Hunter here uses this nade towards the heaven player on A as we saw JKS do and then he is just full on running on the right side not to be spotted if complexity peeks out in con before Monesi would kill him. And then he clears out Khan and tries to get this player around the pillar before he dies. But the Molotov from G2 on this player is perfect, so who threw that? Huxi is the last player of this execute. Huxi starts with this super early CT smoke and an early flash to sell that G2 are going fast. This is done to make sure the Khan player walks out of Khan and focuses main, so the nade Nico throws will hit this player. And he will not be focusing the two water players pushing him. Then just like Nico, he's holding off for the main push until the water players are in the right positions. Then he uses this Molotov and nade it before entering site with Nico. So what are some gaps in this default? Well, the bomb is just way too late in this round and too much alone and this can make or break the execute. Like G2 takes site control just to have to sit and wait for the bomb to catch up. As well as mid is open, Sphere of Fast Drug will be very strong from complexity to stop this ex execute from G2 and water is very open right before the execute. And we might see later on how they abuse this. Something you might forget to look at is the defaults on the T side for the opponent. And this is crucial since the default is how the T starts around. And we will look at the gaps, goals, utility and more for these defaults. This will be crucial to understand how to counter G2 the next time you meet them. 3A, 1 mid, 1B. Nico starts a round off as the solo B player with this Molotov towards B main to make sure complexity can't push him 
and then using Disney to hit any players outside of Kano, as well as popping a flash and then peeking out to try to find a 1v1 fight. Now that there've been some trades in middle, then Nico smokes off main like this since you can be allowed to go to pizza on site and here this forces complexity to use a smoke to block him out of main. When his teammates are going for the A take, Nico becomes the mid lurk of the team to catch the rotation in water or middle. Monty starts by dropping some utility before he's going towards water and A. And here again, we are seeing this fearless playstyle and how he uses his spawn to his advantage. Now that G2 has two more players in water to hold for the con swing, he can just run towards con with his knife out and not be afraid of dying. And here he just wide swings con right after the nade from Nico, since if there is a player here in top con, he will make sure a leg shot is enough. And Monzi just like that has gotten one kill before he dies. An insane play to go for, but it ended up working. Jagia starts by going water and nading the window like this to try to hit any complexity players who is going for the nade towards stairs. But since he has a good spawn, he goes towards water. And this position has anti-flash, in case complexity tries to do an early push A main with a flash. And here JKS will just sit and hold until he's needed somewhere else, and when he collects this kill in A main, this will allow G2 to go for an A take. Uxie is the middle player, and here he tries to molt off the door, but fails the molt off. This is done to force complexity off middle. He tries to hit this cheeky one tap that is a great pre-fire if you want to try to get a player playing in this headshot angle. Then he flashes here that hits both door and mid room, but with not too much happening in middle and no smokes he walks back to help Nico. Since by now Monesi finds the opening kill, but when Monesi dies and Hunter calls he can't trade, Hooks understands that there is no point in committing yet. And he walks back towards middle, when JKS finds the opening kill Hooks walks over to A with the bomb and allows Nico to be the lurker. Hunter uses this smoke early, but then he walks through it and holds Con with Monesi. His goal is just to join Monesi towards water so he can trade his teammate. But when Monesi gets Molotov off, he can't trade anymore. He uses this Molotov inside of Con and then takes it. And this is done since so far in this default, G2 can go to both sides. So for him, it's all about selling the play and why he takes so much control inside of Con. And here we'll just stay until G2 decides A is a better position to execute. He will then fall back to help on A, since by now G2 already has Nico lurking, and to have two lurkers in a 4v3 is not ideal. In the 3A, 1 mid and 1B default, there's some pressure on the solo B and mid player not to die, and this can be abused quite easy, with some good utility and a good swing, as well as the only reason G2 knew where to go after was since the A main player overpeaked, since before this G2 did not have much map control towards middle or B. So if this overpeak do not happen, well G2 might not even be able to go to a site. Big gaps in this default is the lack of early smokes and here complex can abuse this in many ways, like early pushes and peaks. G2's goal in this default were just finding an opening and play from there. It's a reason Hooksy, Nico and Monesi all tried to peek out for kills. Well let's now look at the 2A, 2 mid and 1B default G2 loves to play on Anubis. Nico starts the round again, outside of B and here uses this multi of the hall of main like we saw in the last default, and the same nade as well. Before he now goes into this corner, since most flashes will not hit the player in this corner, so it's done to hold in case complexity gets impatient and wants to swing. Monty starts by using this smoke, and then picks up a nade from spawn that has been dropped. Before he goes to water, here he starts by holding the bridge, before he then swings con after he knows the con smoke has landed. Monesi's goal is just to hold off anything in water and support his teammate by holding this position or with utility as we can see him setting up a player with a flash inside of A main before he will go water and to B after forcing call to rotate to A. Jackie S starts by going carpet for many reasons. First is not to be spotted in water and then he goes here for, for this smoke here that lands A site. This Molotov towards camera and middle and using this nade to hit any players behind the Molotov. A good way to use a lot of impactful utility, until he then tries to make some noise outside of A main and try to find an opening kill and sell the fake. Hooksy starts by using this Molotov towards the middle room, and then this flash to peek middle and spam the smoke. And then one more flash just to make sure Complexity knows that G2 has a player watching middle, to force them to at least have one player staying middle to make the work of Nico and JKS easier. And when Hooksy can't see anyone in middle, he walks, he walks back to help Nico outside of B, but he will not say helping Nico for a long time. Then he lines up this smoke for middle before he re-peaks middle. Hunter goes middle with Hooksy and here uses this Molotov towards the door and then breaks the smoke with a nade in hope that the Molotov have forced a player out in middle, but here he can't have much impact. And he quickly leaves to go water since with the MP7 he can do a lot of damage in water. 
Here he tries to peek out for information, but is met by a player and dies. In the 2A, 2 mid and 1B default, there is much pressure on the solo B player of G2. And in this round we saw how complex they understood this, as well as G2 using a lot of utility early to sell a fake. And here it's a lack of the anchors staying from complexity that made them over rotate and lose the round. The goal for G2 in this default were to get water and mid control, something to be fair they failed at until they managed to get the cold player over rotating. Now that we have analyzed all of this, let's now look at some rounds so we have something to compare to when we break down the rematch on Anubis after this. G2 are going for an interesting round, where they will have two players on B, where one will hold water and the other holds towards main, and then have three players going A. But before the third player goes A, he smokes middle to make sure Complexity will not realize that G2 have no players in middle too early, since then the game will be lost quite quick. While Complexity are going for the 1-3-1 setup with one player going carpet, this is done to make sure he cannot be seen from water, since with this smoke from G2, they could be peaking bridge, and Complexity is not smoked off water. So this is done to be safe and not give anything away. But then one player outside of B uses this utility to just make sure G2 cannot do any early pushes for information. And the last three players in middle have smoked off middle and now spams the G2 smoke in mid and waits for it to fade. G2 uses this flash to allow Monesi to peek into water and then nades carpet like this to hit a player. And this is done to give Monesi any sound cues if there's a player there. And if not, Monesi can move forward knowing carpet is cleared well worth $300. Complexity knowing that G2 has gotten water needs to win some map control. And here it goes for the mid take, where they use this Molotov to hit the door player and then a flash and they run out and has gotten mid. But while all of this is happening, Monis is able with the FAMAS to win the crucial 1v1 against Floppy. A lot of people are worried about, oh That's my That's a days. crazy clip from Monisi. So even though Complexity got middle, they are still at a disadvantage. So where do Complexity go? Well, they need an opening. And that opening comes served for free when Nico decides to peek middle and here is met by three players. And he tried to fall back with a Molotov, but Complexity is able to kill him. And here the Molotov did a lot of damage. And he got J-team, so this round is not completely lost. But Complexity are ready for the BX shoot, and kind of forgets that there could be more players in middle and A site. So when going out on B, Monis is fast and is able to get behind Complexity and finds two kills. Where the two Complexity players were more focused on taking site, and Grim in the 1v4 cannot win the round. 2000. Growing in popularity, oh, Monesi was a transfer, great timing, bomb lost and Grim is about to lose an AK to these CTs. G2 are now playing a 1-1-3 setup, one player in middle, and A and 3 on B. Well, this setup is the default on Anubis, since A set is much easier to take, since the T's can't hide too much on site, while B is way harder to retake, so why not have one player on A holding and then focus on B. While the mid player smokes middle, and the A player Molotov's here to make sure no players can hide in water that we have seen a lot of players abuse. Complexity are going for a 4-1 setup with 4 players going A and 1 in middle. The goal of this setup is to be able to abuse the ID that G2 might have a weak A hold. And here they go carpet again. And as last round, this is done to make sure the water player cannot see any T's in water and would call it clear. And then the mid player's goal is to be the lurker and try to get a kill in middle and hold a rotation. Very important is the timing here. Mid player either goes after the ASQ it happens, or he goes before. If he goes out middle before, it's done to make sure G2 have a player in middle and only one in A. While if he goes after it's to catch rotation and come behind A player's holding. JKS smokes off A main, and this might be since he's expecting a push. And a smoke like this does not do enough to hold off a rush, but can be good to delay, so the rest of his team can get information before the push happens. So how will complexity take sight? Well, they will have Hulserk using this flash, and this flash has all important position on site like camera, headshot, and heaven. And then Complexity will nade the pillar to not having to clear it, so they can focus on site rather. And then we'll just run out before the smoke fades, to break the habit of G2, since JKS is expecting more time to react to this execute, and the information his team could get before the smoke fades. But there's an issue in this execute, and that is the mid player of Complexity game, who gets Molotov out, allowing Nico to rotate and not be afraid of a player coming behind. And this makes the execute much weaker, since if the mid player is too slow, well, he will have no impact. But the execute works out perfect with Cole finding two kills and almost getting sight, but they are not ready for Nico, who finishes the job that Huxi and JKS started. And Nico, like usually, shines this round, finding three kills before Leech can trade him back. Concentrating the efforts, Tech 9 in, so many targets for JKS, many losses for G2, but Nico's got something to say about this. G2 are going for the 1 2 2 setup. With now two players in middle, this is done to be able to set up a play in middle, 
Since the round we have seen so far from Complexity, mid has been crucial for them, so to have two players to take away this from Complexity will be important. The rest of the setup is normal with two players on B, holding default stuff like water and main, and one solo on A, just anchoring down site. Complexity are going for a 3-1-1 setup with three players towards A and water, one in middle and one outside of B. The goal again is to use the slow players to set up a split execute, but they need to stay alive, and it's why the solo players are playing super safe. And then Complexity will use the three player setup in water to try and find the first kill, and some crucial map control. G2 starts around with a mid smoke and an A main Molotov, just to keep Complexity out. While Complexity meets this with a mid smoke themselves and a water smoke. And when the water smoke lands, G2 Molotov's outside of it to make sure Complexity can't rush through it with a flash. Complexity smokes themselves off in A main, and they do this to just set up players behind it and do an execute. But here Jackie S is a step ahead, where we have now moved up to the pillar, and here is able to spam the smoke and find one kill and shoots Halsor Glow to 50 HP. That's so much damage from JKS through the smoke. While he survives with 11 HP, and this has stunned Complexity, and one of the solo players needs to do something, and here a leech want to use this distraction to be able to kill a player in middle, since he's hoping for G2 to play a 1-1-3 setup, so the one mid player should be rotating to A. And here he's able to walk up and shoot Monacy down to 50 HP, but have to fall off. And this push has given Complexity a lot of info, since Monacy is middle, meaning G2 are playing a 1-2-2. But JKS is doing an amazing job keeping Complexity out of A, and Complexity realized that B might be weaker, and turned their attention over to B. Since Grim and Elite has gotten information of sight, and here they can do a split push from water. Monty is always ready, and here he spots Grim in main, but misses. Sadly for Complexity, they uses this main smoke to make sure Monty can't get them when they push us out. But the smoke is too low, and here Monty can just see above it and find Grim. And by now, G2 are 3 players on B, so Nico uses this opportunity to just clear water, where he peeks out, and when he can't see anyone, he just casually jumps down, and here lands behind 2 complexity players, finding both of them, and G2 have won the round. Maybe they thought this one was a given, oh boy, smell you later says Nico. So how do complexity use the information from match 1, and all of the anti shredding to understand how to beat G2 in the rematch? Well, let's now look over some rounds, where we keep the anti-strat finds in mind, where we break down some rounds from the rematch on Anubis. G2 are going for this default 3 a to be setup. The goal for this setup is leaving mid open, since it's very rare that the CTs want to push mid early. So G2 will use this to their advantage to take more control towards A and B. And here G2 goes for quite an early execute with some utility from heaven on A site to force of rotation, while Complexity are going for a 1-1-3 setup with one player on A, one in middle and three on B where the mid player uses a multi to keep G2 out of middle, and then the three B players are just holding like normal. But when G2 goes for this execute, they want to play onto Cole's tendency to rotate off early. So G2's goal is to use this execute to force complexity to rotate, so the two B players with the bomb can just walk out to an open site. J2 is the first to rotate, and why not, complexity are now three B players, so they can afford to rotate one player over. But instead of J2 going right to A site, he will rather go and hold off middle so he can always be able to walk back to B fast. Froppy while holding A site is able to find one kill, and just this one kill stops G2 completely, since their whole idea of faking has been lost now that Floppy can get the one kill and stay alive. So G2 needs an Hail Mary to force Complexity to rotate, since they still want to play off the rotations of Complexity. And here, this comes in Hunter, who again is outside of B and wants to just clear it out together with JKS. And here Hulser can get a 1 for 1 trade, massive for him to find one kill in this situation. So do G2 go B with this? If your goal is for complexity rotate, while well Hunter and JKS have showed complexity the bomb on B, so now G2 rotates all the way back to A in hope that complexity will over rotate towards B site instead. But complexity does the opposite, Grim uses this to his advantage pushing after Hunter and can clear out B main to tell his teammate to not go back to B and stay A. But somewhere in the mix G2 were able to get water and B site. And for the retake, this will be harder now that G2 have full side control, with all three complexity players are coming from water. Well, what did we learn when we broke down the B execute from G2? They pay very little attention to water control, and Hux is the first victim of this with his back turn. And from this, complexity can take water and win the round. Two complexity are going for this every day of the week. Yeah, that, they know that fast rotation point now, so they're going to surely have this on lock here. They're going to double peek it. This is super aggressive, and I like it. Oh, Monacy, the spray ain't there. In for the trade, but he's low, he's so low, and Grimothy clutches it for NA. Get them. G2 are going for 5 players towards A, 
Something we have seen how they execute and last time Complexity lost due to Floppy solo on A using up his pushback utility like Molotov and Smokes too soon. So how do Complexity deal with this this time? Complexity are set up with 3 players B, 1 in middle and 1 on A. And here the middle player smokes middle early, while G2 meets this with a water smoke from spawn. Floppy uses a flash this time outside of A, but why? Well it's done to try to mask and take away the focus from the water smoke, where Complexity will use a nade to break the smoke. And this nade pops as soon as the flash pops, a perfect play on the sound cue. And this is why Floppy's flash is so obvious when he throws it to force G2 to care about it and not the water nade and peek. But G2 are not peeking into it, so this amazing play will not be too good. So why not try again? And Grim with a nade breaks the smoke again to get some information is able to shoot two players low. Something G2 abused in the first game was the whole concept of winning con, since complexity would just give it away to G2 way too much it felt like. So in this round we can see when the flash comes, Grim walks back to backside before he wants to re-peek when his teammate nades inside of Con. Like so far we have clearly seen that Complexity has learned how G2 played last time, while G2 are still doing the same plays. This forces G2 back, and now Floppy smokes A main at a much better time, now that Grim has gotten behind G2 and can clearly tell the rest there will be an A execute. And by now Floppy is back in heaven, since as we saw last time, G2 peaked heaven before the smoke were blooming, so we were able to get a kill or two from there, while a leech faster this time is able to get headshot and such a clean cleanup by complexity to take round five. Probably not gonna be that beast, but they were expecting oh. he goes down, floppy gets point. The JT looking to lock it in here. Oh bomb gonna be planted and G2 happy enough with that extra damage. Now complexity is on the T side. So how will they play around G2's default setup? G2 are going 1A, 1 middle, and 3B. While Complexity meets this with a 1-3-1 setup. Here Complexity starts by using this smoke in middle to force the mid players to peek from door. Something we saw Nico often do no matter what happened in middle. While Grim uses this Molotov to force G2 not to push out of B. Something we saw Nico do a lot. But Nico and G2 meets all of this with a smoke middle and just waiting for Complexity to make the first move. So what has Cole learned from the last time they faced G2? That mid usually is the weakest with only Nico there. And here they use a nade to force Nico back to door if he pushes towards middle. Then he uses a nade to break the smoke and this forces Nico to Molotov door and try to spam the smoke. And here Complexity meets all of this with one more flash, fully blinding Nico in the open. And just like that Nico is out of the round and Complexity has gotten full middle control. Jackie is feeling the pressure has to try to trade. But here gets a one for one trade, not ideal. Hooksy tries to come behind but it's heard by Halsirk. And just like that it's now a 4v2. Complexity knew how G2 played middle and knew if they could just single out Nico with a delayed mid push to not alert rotations earlier, they would win the round. And here they played it perfect. Here as they go through mid, oh. not tempted for the bridge control. Nico, not gonna have too much time to get away oh, here yeah. and the flash blinded him. Oh, just not quite able to get away. The slow from the damage is just not quite enough and the MAC-10 comes through with the trade. Before we go into Ancient, if you love these breakdowns, I got way more on the channel and would mean the world to me if you wanted to subscribe and maybe even check some of them out. I can promise you, you will love them. Thank you. Let's again start by understanding the roles G2 plays on the CT side of Ancient this time, and how the players act in their roles since this build up the foundation and how to approach your T side. Let's start with Nico and his role as the B player on Ancient. Well, the B player on Ancient usually just holds B side and sets up his teammates for success with utility and peaks. Nico starts around by Molotoving like this to block out any early cave pushes or at least damage the player running to cave. And this is a good Molotov to do when your cave player do not have the best spawn. Then Nico nades the Molotov on a set time in case a player is pushing through the Molotov and he goes long to hold this flash for B ramp in case the cave or ramp player wants to swing out towards ramp. Nico pops the flash and peeks ramp off it. And when Monesi wants to take space he uses this door smoke to help him since as the B player you're setting up your teammates for success. This round we see the same Molotov and Nade being used, but Nico then smokes ramp to hold the push off. Something interesting to see how he plays versus a fast round and a slow round. Money sees the AWP, and the AWP does a lot of different things, but the main objective is to play around his spawns and be unpredictable, as well as trying to find opening kills on the CT side. But on this CT default, we did not even see Monesi pick up the AWP. I made a whole video about how the AWP meta on Ancient is kinda dead, so I would rather focus on how we place the rifle and how we can see that he still has the AWP flare when he's rifling. As the AWPer, you want to be hard to read and unpredictable, and they still count when you're rifling. Monesi starts the round with this smoke before he then starts to move towards B. Here he flashes ramp before peeking into sight, 
since he is quite slow to get towards B site, so there might be a player pushing up already. So this flash is to feel safe. Then we are seeing shines of unpredictability, where Monsi Molotov's ramp and then run downs to find a kill. Something complex you just can't predict. But on the second try he sadly loses the fight, but we are seeing no matter what, Nico is right by Monesi with utility and more to help him out. Next one, Monesi is going middle, and this is all about him being unpredictable. Here Monesi starts with this Molotov, and then he runs out of the top mid smoke complex he throws, like this to be anti flash, to make sure he can trade his teammate if he gets blinded, or if complexity were to try to flash them. He nades bottom middle and quickly takes ramp and cave control for his team. And just to predict any of this is impossible, and it's why he's so good on this map. JKS is the A site anchor of the team, and here your main goal are just to hold your assigned site. And you have to be like a ship's anchor and hold down the site like a ship's anchor would. And you can't leave before you know it's the other site or somewhere else. So how do JKS play in this role? Well, he starts the round by early getting some data on how complex they are playing on the T side. By going here with a Molotov in his hand and then jiggle peeking, and when making contact, he will use the Molotov to buy him enough time so a mid player can help him, and he can get back to site or donut to play from here. Since as a sole A player, you cannot die too early. He then smokes it off and tries to play around the boxes to be unpredictable. And this is done so complexity cannot reject yes and understand how he plays as an anchor. I usually say that when clearing for the anchor, just clear out everything on sight. Next one to look at is a run where JKS is on the op, and him oping on Ancient plays an interesting role. Since the op can be anywhere, and many teams like Complexity or Virtus Pro loves to have the op anchoring down A site instead of a rifler. This is done since the A site is basically built for opers. Like we are seeing JKS hold here a perfect angle for an oper to just shut down the round. Even though JKS did not see any rushes, it's good to learn that he is always moving, never standing still, so Complexity cannot pre-fire him, and this allows him to clear more than he would if he only stood in temple. Huxi is the second B player that focuses cave for the team. With this role, his goal is to always make sure B is cleared, with a focus on winning cave control early. Huxi starts by not using any utility before entering cave, since he has two players with him using utility already. All he wants to do is to be able to use that utility, so he will have a full focus on taking cave control. He Molotovs behind the smoke in hope in a cold player having to cross over the smoke, and then he nades the smoke to break it, so he can get this kill. It's a nice combo, in theory, but in reality it barely works. But it's good to know and good thing to do, because sometimes it might work. And then after they lose middle, he quickly falls off from cave, since by now he can be pushed from both sides of the cave opening. So to stay is not good. But Tuxi will only fall off if G2 loses middle, before then falling back to site. And when he loses his teammate on B, well, he then walks back and here with JKS trying to get some exit kills. And this is a great idea, where they are able to catch the bomb and win the round. When there is no movement in cave, Hooks will start to move around, and in this round we can see him leaving cave and going to middle to help his mid players. Hunter is the dedicated mid player of the team. He will usually start the round in middle with a utility set that consists of a deep Molotov flash and a nade. This allows him to take early middle control for his teammate. He then uses this control to either walk up towards B and cave, or just sit in middle, holding the smoke until it fades, or complexly tries to break the smoke. If there's not much happening in middle, he will stay since he might be needed to help the A site players, and will only move from middle if there is a site execute on A or B, or he has one more mid player with him to do a lurk or flank. This round starts with the early bottom mid smoke we saw complexity popularize, and then since he is late, he will still throw the utility, but will make sure to flash before then taking middle. He does this to make it look like he's still pushing bottom middle, and is not stuck behind a smoke. But this have made it so he's not as deep in bottom mid as he would like, and complexity can counter this with a two man swing, while Hunter will get a 1 for 1 trade. We now understand how G2 plays their CT side, so let's now look at an execute they are doing on the T side, the roles to everyone and the utility they use, as well as gaps in the execute we can abuse next time. Nico buys a Krieg, which is so funny, since when the Krieg was the best gun in the game, if anybody remember the Krieg and Og meta, he was one of those pros who most thought would just use it and own with it. But Nico rather told everyone to stop using it and try to stop the whole meta thing and didn't even pick it up once. Well he probably did but you get the point. And now that it has been nerfed, he has started to use it a lot. And here you can see why. The scope helps you hold off any CTs pushing down ramp and it's a great way of holding from this off angle. When Monacy finds a kill, Nico is fast to throw this short smoke to allow the ramp player to get up and Monacy to only focus elbow. As well as flashing into elbow and molotoving behind the CT smoke, T true. 
Monty has the best spawn possible and he loves being aggressive, so now we can do this. And here we will use this spawn to just straight up rush cave and find an unsuspecting floppy, who just tried to smoke off ramp from cave. Monty then focuses on elbow to hold this until his teammate can clear out sight and take elbow. And then he flashes and smokes CT to help his elbow player clearing out towards CT and behind the smokes. JKS starts with this top mid smoke from spawn. This is the best and fastest version from spawn to smoke top middle and then gets ready with a flash lineup like this just in case Hunter needs some flashes to take middle or to push away any complexity players in middle. After the flashes he's ready to take the bomb and join his teammates on B to take the site as the third guy out. Hooksy start by running behind Monacy with a smoke out. His goal is not to join Monacy but rather smoke off any Molotov drones by complexity to stop this push. And when the Molotov lands Hooksy smokes it off and right after Monacy gets the first kill He's now the entry trying to take sight and here finds a kill. And since he's low, he will use this to his advantage to keep on taking space towards CT and back sight. So he can do this just to get information. And then he waits for the Monacy flash and the eco flash and he peeks off this. Hunter starts by going towards middle and here he uses this net towards middle to try to hit a player coming middle. As well as trying to connect the lucky spray before falling back. And as the lurker, when the execute go as well as it did for G2, he can just chill middle and make sure complexity can't get behind ramp without being seen. Well, for this execute, Complexity played a 2 to 1 setup, with 2 players on B, 2 in middle and 1 on A. And here Complexity were able to get middle, but this had no impact since Monacy and Huxi were able to deal with both B players rather quick, and no trades. And a big misplay by G2 in this was Monacy, as soon as he got the first kill, he just ran towards site without clearing anything. So here if Complexity were one more player, they could have dealt with this, or if Floppy were just more prepared, and went for a Molotov to hold or a closer smoke, as well as in middle, Complexity had to rotate faster. When they did not see anyone crossing from middle, since the smoke floppy through allows them in middle to get into cave unnoticed by any G2 players in ramp. Niku is a solo B player. His goal in this round is just to stay alive. And here he has gone for the Kree again to stay alive. This means he will only watch for the ramp push. And he will play from this off angle. And when he's pushed he will just move down and run away since his teammates has gotten A side control. Monacy is one of the three players going middle, and here he starts by holding this cross until one of his teammates can cross and clear where he's holding. And since Nico is not holding cave, Monacy uses this to hold cave for Nico to cover this part of the map. When Nico calls he's getting pushed, Monacy will use this flash to allow one of the mid players to peek down to try to help Nico. Monacy then joins into Donut and clears it out by holding here while the first player in Donut clears it out and can go and plant. JKS start by using this spawn base smoke for top middle and then lines up this flash to be thrown as soon as G2 will enter middle. And this flash flashes any players peeking middle from donut or red room. And then JKS as the solo A player will hold A main for any early pushes and when his teammate starts to go towards donut he will then start to clear main out just to make sure it's clear. After the bomb is planted JKS uses this to take temple control. Huxi is as well one of the three players going middle and here Huxi will be the second player to peek out middle and the first to enter Donut. Hooks again will be the entry fragger for the A take. He multiples back Donut like this to make sure no complexity players can hide behind it. And as the entry you can't clear all, but since he's alone, he just lazy clear most to make sure the minimap can show red dots if he misses someone, Jackie S and Monacy can kill. And here, he just looks over the player hiding but wins the fight. Hunter is the last player to go middle and uses this nade. This is done to hit any player going down the stairs in middle. And then he slowly clears everything top middle before he will move towards the boxes and play in this off angle in case a donut player wants to push him. He then resmokes red room. This is why we saw Huxi keep his smoke instead. And then he walks up on the boxes now that Nico needs help. And as Wind Diesel, he always prioritizes family first. And then after G2 plants, he will just stay in middle and just hold red room. Now that Jackie S has A main, Monacy has donut and Nico has T spawn. In the 1A 3 mid and 1B default, the pressure is mainly felt by those solo on A and B players, since their job as the second part of a split execute is important, and why we saw Nico play super safe outside of B and JKS took his time to clear out A main, to not get killed. So how can Complexity abuse this? A massive misplay in this setup was Cave. Just one mid smoke and Cave will not be held by any G2 players. As well as if you can take away middle from G2 early, this default just falls flat, since it's so reliant on the mid control. Let's now break down G2's 2 mid and 3 B default. 
Nico is one of the three B players, and here he starts by using this Molotov to make sure Complexity can't push down ramp, and then he holds here to be safe from any boost from Complexity. As well as this hold is very good if, if a Complexity player decides to swing or push down. Then he uses this smoke for CT before he goes to pre-fire ramp, and when it comes to Nico, he has this nailed down, and here finds the first kill. And he then just stays in ramp trying to kill the player who wants to trade. He spams the wood, when G2 decides to rather go A, Nico will stay and hold for the complexity player, clearing him out. Monsi has a great spawn, and here we use this to try and push cave. And here when entering cave, he holds the door for any players pushing it. And when the door is cleared, he then clears the corner in cave. And as we saw in the execute, when he gets this kill, he does not clear anything else. But now that he has not gotten any opening kill, he will clear out cave super safe and make sure it's cleared. And since G2 are not going out, he will stay cave until the call is to go A. He will then go from cave to middle alone to try to catch any rotations. JKS starts with an off spawn red room smoke, and then gets ready to line up some flashes for middle, and this flash will be thrown as soon as the nade to break the smoke is thrown for bottom middle, since the nade and flash has almost the same duration from throw to activated, so it's easy to time. And after this he will help in middle, and then start to hold A main until G2 decides where to go. Hooks again will join Monacy to smoke off any Molotovs that Complexity might throw their way. When Monacy can't see anyone in cave, Hooks will then start to spam the wood in hope to do some damage, or to get a kill on a player in the corner or towards CT. Hooksy then go back to the door and uses this nade Molotov and Flash combo towards B site, before falling back and joining in A main. Hunter is the second player in middle, and here he starts by dropping a Flash since he will not need it. And then he Molotovs Kirby, since if they want to take middle, this Molotov makes sure he will not have to clear Kirby and can rather focus on Red Room and Donut. When he gets smoked off, he uses this lineup for the nade and pushes out after the nade breaks the smoke and JKS flash pops. And here Hunter has one goal, to fully clear middle. And here he clears Red Room, Donut and all and is allowed to walk up to Red Room and CT. In the 2 mid and 3B default, there is some pressure to be fast since you don't really have one player to dedicate their time to watch A. So any fast A flanks might be quite painful for G2 to deal with. Now after all we have looked at and digged into, let's now look at some rounds so we have something to compare to when we break down the rematch on Ancient after this. G2 are going for the default setup of 1-2-2. Two, two. The goal for this setup is to keep one player on A just to have some info there. The A player goal is to just make sure to stay alive so the middle player can help him if needed. Then the 2 mid player uses their position to take deep mid control early with a spot deep smoke, a Molotov behind it to make sure complexity cannot push it, and then a nade to just hit a player if they're hiding in the smoke close. And then the top mid player will hold Fortnite or rotate over to A if needed. And then the last two players on B will try to take ramp, with one player holding the ramp push if complexity decides to go for it. And then the other will push cave, and this is done to try to coordinate this with the middle players, so they can have a two-man ramp push from cave. Complexity are going for a 2-3 setup, with two towards A, trying to just find an opening kill and toy with rotation, and then three players towards B, to clear ramp out and get ready for the execute. And the goal for complexity setup is to use the A main player to force a mid player to rotate over to A, and here complexity peeks out and spots JKS who Molotov's complexity out. This forces Monacy to rotate, only problem is that JKS can quickly call it a fake. So Hunter stays, while all of this is happening, Hooksy will clear out ramp and after Nico shoots one low and Hooksy peeks out and can find one kill with no trades and Nico find one more, it's a perfect punch setup. Hooksy peeks and gets one kill and falls back so when complexity focuses him, Nico peeks out and finds one more kill. And they are looking, they're hungry for frags on both ends but Hooksy's got something to say about this one and Nico still running hot from that first half. G2 are going for a 1-1-3 one, one, setup this time. This is done to focus B side rather than mid and then uses this to take cave and even ramp, before then helping in middle. And here G2 starts the round with this smoke for bottom middle and bottom ramp to force complexity out, where complexity meets this with an early cave smoke and a Molotov in Kirby. So a very utility heavy early round setup from both teams. While complexity are set up with two players outside of B, two in middle and one in spawn to use some utility to help this mid player to take middle. So how will complexity break out in the middle? Well, Grim are ready with this nade to clear the smoke out, while the leech is behind the smoke and waiting for Grim to break it. And on this timing, the spawn player will flash middle, so they can take it. G2 Molotov's trump cave, but too late and JT can peak middle on the timing of the mid player flash and Grim breaks the smoke. And here we are seeing a 1 for 1 trade, 
quite a beautiful way of complexity, dealing with the G2 mid take they have been abusing so far this game. But all of this and some smokes and molotovs have made sure complexity are lacking in the utility department. So for a 1 for 1 trade, they would struggle to take site with only 2 smokes left. So how will G2 make sure complexity can't get much map control? Well, the cave player molotovs cave to make sure complexity can't push. And then Monish peeks down ramp and here is able to find one kill on a player peeking him and do 50 HP to the other player in ramp. While G2 smokes late door so Monish is able to get away after this kill. But complexity are just too split up, one cave, one door and one ramp. So Monish wants to use this to his advantage. And now with this door smoke, instead of falling off, he wants to push and get one more kill and make sure his team can win the round, since he now has Nico with him to trade. Never mind, here JT is able to find both kills and has made the round winnable again and down to a 3v2. Over it's the all for the M4. That man has got something to say about this round and Nico trying to follow up, but JT comes to life now. But Complexity take their sweet time and here allows G2 to take full middle control and here we see a massive misplay. Complexity takes sight as two player while the bomb is yet to move away from ramp and doors. And when sight is cleared, well, ramp and mid is not cleared anymore. So when the bomb peeks out to cross sight, he is killed and here G2 can just guard the bomb and win the round. Here the bomb carry had to jiggle and rather throw the bomb across and a massive misplay has lost complexity such an important round. What a peak! There oh. it is! They're just too slow, they're just creeping forward, just dragging their bodies towards that bomb site, and now JKS is not gonna hit that AWP. Hook is there, the fake is here, Hooksy needs to survive for one more second. Around he goes, but... So how do Call use this information from match one and all of the anti-stratting to understand how to beat G2 in the rematch? Well, let's look over some rounds while we keep in mind the anti-strat finds when we break down some more rounds. G2 are going for the 4B1A setup. Last time we talked about this setup when G2 played 4B and 1 middle, the goal is for G2 to find an early opening kill. And last time, we saw Monisi with Abuse's amazing spawn to get KFS. Complexity are going for a 1-2-2 setup again, where two players will get middle control, 2B will take more control towards ramp and cave with this Molotov, and then the solo A player wants to get an opening from A and stay alive. Since last time we talked about this setup, we talked about how a fast A player will be very effective against a setup like this, since this will give you full A and middle control. And here Hulserk in a very forward position is able to deal with Huxi, who were meant to fake the A take and draw out rotation. Complexity Molotovs outside of cave while G2 gets ready for the execute. Since the fake did not pan out and here by just swinging they are able to kill Floppy. But now that they have no players in middle and all three are on B site, G2 is just getting boxed in by utility and complexity who has the better guns. And this is a key round to see how more prepared complexity are for a play like this and not giving G2 any opening kills. They don't want to let G2 plant, and I don't think they're going to. Oh, JKS gets it down, but he gets bowled over, and it's all up to Hunter. Man's got a big job on his hands. G2 are going for the 1 1 3 setup, and this is a great setup as the mid player will use a lot of utility to make sure Kopaxi can't get any information towards middle, and then G2 will use the 3 B players to take more information and space towards ramp. But in this setup, the A site and middle are super weak, and just like in chess, Kopaxi needs to know how to attack this weakness. Complexity are going for the 1-1-3 one, one, setup with one player in middle, one outside of A and three towards ramp. And here with three players they will be able to find the advantage, since when we look at G2's default we know Nico will stay behind to help his B players towards ramp and we can see Complexity are playing a safe and just waiting for this overpeak by G2 that we saw last time G2 were three players towards B. In the meantime Complexity has managed to get Hunter away from middle and the smoke G2 through towards door has not been enough to keep complexity away from ramp. And Halser uses this opportunity to take full on ramp control. Try and find an early opening, since we saw how aware Monisi were before peeking out ramp with a flash and all, showcasing us all how weak early ramp can be for the G2 setup. And as predicted, Halser is able to find two kills due to the lack of oversight towards the ramp position, and G2 has to save. Taking a solid line, JKS thought he was fine, oh. but again, complexity crushing the dreams of G2, but doing so well to take this site. The art of outthinking, outstrategizing, and outplaying your opponent has been around for years in Counter Strike and in competitive environment in general. And in Counter Strike, we call this concept anti strating But as we saw, this requires a lot of work, so why do teams do it? Well, it's a way to be more prepared for what you will meet in the match. It's easy as that. 
as the team you want to know how to counter X play by X team, or how to counter and execute the enemy throws with how to use utility and position yourself. And that's why, just be more prepared. But as a team you don't want to rely too much on anti stratting since when you meet a team in a major qualifier with no matches, well then you need to trust that your strats are better, something we saw Astralis do a lot when they were the greatest team in the world. So how do you prevent anti stratting Alma Puddy some years ago made an amazing video about how Liquid was so hard to counter, where you look at a play a team would do and tell yourself, how would that team anti strat this play? Let's say you threw a weird smoke that is new, well maybe they will use this setup or some other nades now to counter it. And then you will look at this with your team and look at how you can change up the play to meet the anti strat. It's like I do this move so you can do this move now I will do this move. Like for instance doing a different smoke or switching up from a fast approach to a slow approach or straight up changing how to use the utility. This can go on forever. And my favorite part of anti stratting was when, co was when complexity in 2021 blast final the biggest trophy for the org in CSGO and for most of the players. And here BlameF talked about the outside play he had seen Vitality do with Apex and the utility they used. And here he had anti stratted that in this position he is not seen, not cleared and he won the round from there. And this was all thanks to him anti stratting and predicting perfect what Vitality would do. And some of the best plays we have seen are all from anti stratting like Twist nuke play, here's a video of me breaking down this play. But this was a play made. This was a play made to counter Navi's outside push with electronic under the silo setup. There is some stigma around the whole concept of anti stratting. Some community member thinks anti stratting ruins the sport, since as we saw in this match, where Complexity lost the first match, learned from their mistakes, and saw what G2 did and won. So by that logic, just lose a less important match and learn and win the more important one. But this logic does not hold up. Astralis was number one for years. And no matter how much teams anti stratted them, they could still not beat them. The goal of an anti strat is not only to learn how the enemy play, but just to be more prepared. And this will take the game further, since when you anti strat, you look at setups, executes, utility, and more. And by looking at all of this, you will push the game further, the meta further, and more. Thank you for watching.